it very much yeah this feels right dang it i wanted to sit on the couch but this feels more right like it just feels i think like it was i think it was me i think it was me actually well no it's not even like that it's it's a it's a cross i'm not wanting to bear because this chair is more uncomfortable the chairs the couch no. is more comfortable but I probably need to be uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, well, my my chair is not comfortable at all. I don't even have a back on mine, dude. Oh. I'm on a bench. I record on a bench. Way to <laughs> shut me up. I'm like, well, I'm just leaning back in my like full back support right now. I'm on I'm literally on my seat is two two by fours put together. Yeah. Two you by should... sixes. You should put two some two like, by sixes. You should put some like, like maybe like really small pieces of like sharp rock or something on it, <laughs> like like glue it straight up. So it's just. But the same will show you how to do it once you get started on the process. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Hi, welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew. And tonight I'm going to ask Father in Cyprian, what is something that you are, um, what is something that you are like really impressed about, about your wife? Like something that like really is just like, you just like look back and solidly just like that is impressive. That she's able to do. I that. was I was just talking about this. Literally was talking about this two days ago, and it is uh, it is just the simple fact that uh, that she can actually like stand me. Honestly, <laughs> I realize that I'm a very very difficult person, and I've always been a very difficult person. I think people can. People who like me, like they only, I know they only like me because they only have to deal with me in short doses. But if you had to deal with me like on a 24 hour basis, I would find it very, very difficult for anybody to, to remain like, oh, I, I really like this guy, but my wife. So then, then I'd have to ask maybe a second part to the question. What do you mm. think is something that you do that annoys your wife? Oh, everything. <laughs> it's like my very existence. <laughs> <laughs> just being me <laughs> what do i do that it, what do i do that annoys my I don't like, know, what do i prob don't prob do? yeah probably my you know just probably my a my average everyday tone of just like is something wrong like i'm the, i'm i'm so disagreeable that it's just like at any given time, people are like, "Is there something wrong with this guy? Is he just being a is he, he being a douche right now?" For no and I'm not. I'm just totally disagreeable. I'm just a super disagreeable person. And you know what? She deals with it. She's a, she's a would champ. you she's would you consider yourself a contrarian? Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Uh, you know, I'm. I don't. I don't think I am a contrarian. I don't think you are. I don't think I don't think I am at all. I don't think I am a contrarian. I'm not that. But what I am is like um I think that I I I will put up boundaries in situations that may be a bit over the top. Hmm. You know? The boundaries are over the top or the situations over the top? The like the situation may be minor and I'll put up like some crazy boundary. <laughs> right? Which is yeah. which is like I think my business partners really like me because yeah. I'm the guy in a negotiation who will be like, no, stop, no, yeah, yeah. no, I'll, I'll be, I'll be the bad cop, like I'll be the bad cop, and they'll be like, ooh, I wouldn't have even done that because I would have been really afraid we're gonna lose this deal. We never lose the deal, but yeah. I'm just like, no, 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 you got to show me something, yeah, show me something before yeah. I do. I'm not doing anything. Show yeah, me, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. and that's, but you know what? That's just how I am, and my wife deals with it like a champ. She really does. She really does. She doesn't let me get away with it, actually. That's good. Too. I'll try that with her sometimes, and she'll just be like, "Nah, I'm not the one. I'm not the one. It's not happening. <laughs> Clean it up. <laughs> Clean it up. 
I, I just got to jump in because it just, I just realized I have to change mine because I actually had an answer already. But as Cyprian was saying that, I realized what my wife says is I'm by nature, it's like inherent that I'm very passive aggressive. Like I'm mm. very like um, not willing to say what I'm actually angry about, but I will sure hint about what's mm. going on. And my wife is very good at dragging that out of me. Like, just like, like, just like, what is wrong? That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. You need to think a little bit harder. And then I'll finally get to like, I guess I'm just worried about school. And she's like, there you go. That's the problem. That's a good and partner to have, man. That's what I'm saying. And then the second part of what do I do that annoys my wife is that I'm passive aggressive. I'm not really anymore so much, you know, because the church, uh, be, like Christ and Christ through my wife have really show me how like um, counterproductive that is and how like kind of cowardly it mm -hmm. is. It's very cowardly. Mm -hmm. It's very, like I've realized that it's very much and it's, but it's also like cowardly and slimy mm -hmm. because you're like, mm -hmm. I'm not even like strong enough to let go of the resentment. I just don't want to like be mm -hmm. seen as a resentful person. So it's even vain as well mm -hmm. because you're mm -hmm. like, it's image management and a refusal to let things go. And I forget what the original one was, but it's all three of those like stacked together. It's gross. So mm. anyway, mm. yeah. What about you, Father? you, Father? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's I can't really. I don't know what's not difficult about my wife's life. You know, um, <laughs> so <laughs> you know, we got we got eight kids. You know. Uh, being up a party, uh, you know, what I mean, just uh, people don't know how you know rough it is being a priest, but it's even like rougher being the priest's wife, you know. Mm. So, so I mean, yeah, just all the years, and just I think the thing she's been able to hold it down with joy and you know, really God's grace and not being you know embittered. Um, about things, you know, so yeah, she's just, she's ride or die. She's a soldier. She's tough as nails. She's a lioness. She's just, you know, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So. I have, if I may, father, one of my favorite stories about your wife was my wife was over there one time and they were having a full on conversation, like talking in your kitchen and, um, one of father's little sons who couldn't have been more than three or four at this time ran up and took a book and chucked it at your wife and made conversation, just put out her hand and the book hit the hand, but she never once stopped like talking to my wife. Like the conversation just kept going <laughs> and she just like, boom, hit the, hit the book. Yeah. And then like the book just fell to the ground and the son ran away. And that yeah. was that. Like that yeah. was the end of the well, whole what's thing. What's funny is we, had, we, we, that moment happens all the time and we go, Oh, crouching tiger. Like that's, that's our little code word for Crouchy Tiger. So every once in a while, she'd be like, "Did you see that Crouchy Tiger?" I mean, just because I shouldn't let too much in, but oh, that's what people want, right? It's like some people realize. Just I mean, our house is just nuts, you know. It's like, but it's nuts. I mean, there's knives laying around. <laughs> you know, it's just it's like it's dangerous. Like our house is, you know, whatever. Just that's just that's how we roll, whatever, you know. So. So there's always some kind of glass falling or something. And so she's just, yeah. just walk is bullet time all the time, <laughs> like in our 100%. house. So, yeah, 100%. Great. That's great. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Maybe we all well, strive a little bit harder. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking um, of bullet time. Speaking of bullet time. Ooh. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, <laughs> smooth transition. Smooth transition. Man. I mean, how could we talk about anything else, really? No, yeah. I was telling my it's wife. Been, it's it's, been, be it's been the moment. The Holy Spirit just gave that underhand pitch right there. Yes. <laughs> and you guys need something to talk about. There you go. <laughs> I was telling my wife on the way home from work, she's like, are you recording tonight? And I was like, I think we have to. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, like, we've, of all the times. We've taken a couple yeah. of weeks off, and that's just going to happen. I'm sorry, everyone. It's just going to happen. We we're three men with with lives and wives and all that, but um, this tonight I was like, yeah, this is this is pretty much going to have to happen because it was even me who am 
who who am who like I am you who pretty, am I am dense. Even I recognized pretty right away, pretty much as soon as someone texted me. I think Cyprian was the first one to text me and mm. say this just happened. I recognized pretty quickly. He's like, that's pretty significant. Like that's pretty. That's a moment we've been waiting for. We didn't know what it was going to be, but it was going to yep. be something. And I was like, that feels like something. And uh, well, it's it's almost too archetypical of like the thing. You know what I mean? It's one of those. If we would have sat down and somebody was like, "What's going to be the catalyst?" It's almost like somebody would have brought that up and somebody would have been like, stop, that's like a movie. I know, right? That's like a yeah. that's that's how it would happen in a movie, dude. Let's talk about how it's gonna happen or in real life. Well, the like thing is too, match. it's like, man, I don't even know how you just jumping in, whatever. Um yep. just for the record, everyone always remember there's no pre-production. We're just <laughs> we go oh, from yeah. we go from <laughs> cracking fizzy waters to like talking. Anyways, uh man, everyone's so prepped for it. Like, I, I think the thing that is wild to me is that there's a framework for which people are dialoguing about something. Like, everyone's has some measure of quote-unquote expertise now. Like, everyone has some, some sort of, like, insight into conspiracy. Everyone has, you know what I'm saying? And so if it wasn't for the last few years, the the potential for everyone to kind of really be invested in this different kind of way wouldn't be possible. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like the fact that, you know, conspiracy quote unquote is mainstream now and that everyone, you know, it's almost like, you know, the guy a year ago who was the lame guy, he's now calling other people lame. Like that's where we're at now. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, Oh, if you don't realize what's going on, and so the reason why I think that's really relevant is because it adds just one more layer of what is going on. It's it's a whole nother layer of the psychological nature and the problem that this is, you know, obviously like the main thing. It isn't just a straightforward thing. And that's the point. Right. I think that dimension that dimension is huge and it's 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 i don't want to get all meta about it but i think it's a thing no very few people are gonna probably key into is that you got so many people now who you know are are kind of new to the space of alternative thought but because of the nature of how everything from social media just the way our, the way our society is functioning now and the way people intake information that false sense of kind of expertise and discernment yeah. um is really kind of clouding the ability to 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 at least start making some headway of what's really happening. So it's an interesting net that's been thrown, you know. Well, there's a there's almost like there's a, a almost like a societal schizophrenia mm -hmm. where like everybody's looking mm -hmm. for meaning in everything. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I noticed <clears throat> that kept that that it popped out to me. And it was really interesting because it was the thing that I kept hearing over and over and over again. And it absolutely reminded me of Alex Jones and his response to Sandy Hook mm -hmm. that ended up getting him sued for a billion dollars and basically losing everything he had. And the whole crux of Alex Jones is like thesis about Sandy Hook when he started out was the same, the same mantra that I kept hearing. And it was they didn't react like they should like down from Trump didn't react like he should. When it happened, the secret service didn't react like they should. The cops who were near the building where the shooter was, didn't react like they should. The people in the stands in back of him didn't react like they should. Then when Trump got up and pumped his fist, that wasn't reacting like he should. They didn't react like they should when in throwing him in the van. They did all of these things was like, they didn't react like they should even down to black rock. And that in the Black commercial, Rock. yeah. After they BlackRock, after yeah. they announced the dude's name, then all of a sudden BlackRock does a press release like, "Hey guys, guess what? He was in a commercial of ours like yeah. two years ago." What? As though they just scan for like every single time this happens or an event like this. They scan, but all dude, the but even if, even if they knew, and that's even ridiculous. if they knew, is like, is that good PR for you? Is that really like, is that how you react to finding out that information, or do you try to keep it hidden? You don't be the ones who are like, hey, guys, 
He's in our commercial yeah. when people already think this about yeah. BlackRock. And I'm like, but there is something interesting to it where the people who were saying this, one of the things that I felt, found interesting about it is that it comes with an assumption that you know how people should react. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? That, that, like, that you have sort of all of these... And people react so weird to traumatic events. Like anybody who's been around a traumatic event right. is like, no, nah, people were acting super weird. Right. People don't know how to act. Right. You know, and and but I think that like that schizophrenia of I think that's like the, the right search there. for meaning, right? Yeah, I, I think I think that's really a good thing to kind of hook onto and see where that pulls us because that is really um others have kind of like commented on that too but I, I think the way you're kind of getting into it um and that's a great way to frame it because it is that that a societal schizophrenia and you know I, I think one of the things too interestingly enough is that interface or that kind of um that interface but that intersection in which like spirituality right and then the the delusion the lack of sobriety of schizophrenia begin to play off of each other right and then we all know that this makes a very interesting space right by which i mean the devils get super i mean it it becomes fertile ground for the bacteria to grow spiritually speaking that that demonic bacteria because that is literally the nature of the game you know in regards of like i i think when the let me just don't let me belabor this too much, but you know, one of the things that when you talk about demonic influence in people's lives, because of TV and because of all these things, people really don't know what they're looking for. And, you know, I mean, obviously people are looking for, they think it's going to be over the top things. Right. But confusion is like one of the number one things Mm -hmm. it's Mm -hmm. one of the number one signs of demonic influence is confusion and then from there you know the confusion if it's not if it's not tended to with truth it becomes madness you know and the 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 type of madness that it's like a it's like a a waking fever you know um and it's always characterized by a type of um arrogance and pride right because the 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 assumption of my opinion or what I'm seeing must be true because it's how I feel. It's my own personal experience. That's what, that's what foments the pride. That's what foments the madness. That's what allows it to go deeper and deeper into the kind of the, the inner recesses of a person. So that is actually what's happening on a societal level. Um, Which in my mind, that really kind of connects what I was saying earlier, about like people have the sense of like, kind of expertise already in trying to analyze everything Mm -hmm. but it's it's craziness because the reality is is that that's part of the game is that you know the black rock thing let's say you can go either way with it (laughs) you know what i mean yeah you can you can literally go either way with it and so ultimately we like what is what is the thing that's happening you know the confusion um and all of these things the hurting of people h-e-r-d hurting um yeah, the words, right yeah right so um well yeah. it's interesting father that it's it's interesting that you mentioned the the aspect of pride mm. in that schizophrenic phenomenon because i do i i had one ex of mine who at one point we had, we hadn't been together for many years and then you know I noticed that she was starting to like tag me and some Facebook things. This is 10 years ago, maybe. And then looked at what was going on with her. And she was like, she was having a schizophrenic break. Mm -hmm. She ended up, she had some schizophrenic psychotic episode, but part of her whole narrative was that she was like secretly some sort of, cause she was a Persian. She was secretly some sort of like hidden Persian aristocratic family and now people and she was like a chosen one. And now people were like hunting her down or something that was going on. And, you know, it, and like it's interesting that that's part of that schizophrenic mm-hmm. psychotic break. Is that like your who you are and your importance because you're seeing meaning in everything that's happening that isn't there. 
your own importance becomes raised up and the connection of that to the demonic to demonic possession or something like that seems just obvious to me mm -hmm. well that's interesting that you bring that up Cyprian, because i was just talking about that because i work at a place with where people with mental health issues go and schizophrenia is starting to be something that it has a particularly like um like has like a flavor to it. it has like a particular like smell and flavor to it um which is interesting because there was a guy, it's not the same thing, but there was a guy who was on a podcast I used to listen to who had had, um, what is it, Tourette's? Mm -hmm. a Tourette, Tourette syndrome. And his friend was blind. Um, but So his sense of smell was extraordinary. Um, and he said he could smell ozone coming off of his friend, like like electrical discharge not registering correctly and releasing ozone. So like he could like smell the the mental illness, like the brain synapse is not firing correctly from what? Well, they say dogs can smell before an epileptic has a seizure, mm -hmm. a seizure. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's something to that. But anyway, the point is, mm. is that there's a particular thing and not because I'm cool and not because I'm a, a, an amazing human being, but there's been times where just hearing about what people are doing I'll say like, that sounds like a schizophrenic person and not big things, right. just like not being able to fill out a job application, like trying to like calculate hours of time worked at a job rather than months or days or years or whatever, just stuff mm -hmm. like that. A host of a list of things like that. And be like, that sounds like schizophrenia. And one of those things is, is that always they are select from a certain group of people. So just the other day, a guy was saying that the FBI is experimenting with that electromagnetic pulses. And he's one of 500 people in the entire world that they're sending messages. Right. So always there is always. always it's like a characteristic that there has to be this elevated sense of importance of this. Like I'm I'm in I'm here. I'm down low. I know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And like that is has a strong link, you know, to mental illness on the whole. Like so, but that's that's but that's QAnon. Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. that's the point. And and this was like what what I was saying to somebody is like, for somebody who's one of those Q, because there are actually I guarantee you that there are some actual schizophrenics who are QAnon people, like because it's just it's just perfect for them. Yeah. But if you're if you're a QAnon person, you're already like letting yourself fall into a sort of schizophrenia, yeah. and like sort of like wash inside the soup of schizophrenia for this thing to happen if you're a QAnon person this this is like that, that that's like it this is you're demonic. sold yeah. no, no one would ever be able to pull you out of it you would never be able to be pulled out i think that's actually like the one of the most dangerous things because like i feel like now you have people who feel like and and I think that this is where it gets into the to to really for me the 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 part where it's like we're here. There are people right now who feel like they like they witnessed the incontrovertible pr proof that like the Messiah has returned. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's a yeah, okay. Yeah. There is there is an entire subclass of people who were primed for this by a whole series of things. Who, and some of them are in significant positions of power. Like, I believe some of those people are in Congress right now. I do believe that. And for me, that's like, I don't know. It's, it's, it seems almost See, unreal, but it's I, like, I yeah, just, that's what it is. I mean, it's hard. I was, I was, it's interesting. This is probably, I've, I've never meditated beforehand on an episode like this one here because mm -hmm. i just i'm really aware of what is what's at stake and also to you know what i mean by that isn't just i mean whatever you know it's it was nice and fun we got an episode pulled whatever but what i mean by what's at stake is um I th I really feel like some some of the things that we've been pointing at and trying to connect for these last couple of years kind of need to start getting explicit tonight in regards of okay the powers the principalities like this is the moment 
that everyone kind of needs to really understand. It's almost like the culmination to some degree of the project because now is, is the point in which these things which seem abstract and, and they are to some degree start becoming very much object ob, like ob, like objectifiable. <laughs> like you can like look at them concrete, you know, like they become explicit in 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 beginning to understand how stuff works. For so for instance, um when you start realizing that speaking metaphorically about something in many ways in a Christian sense is to allow is to help someone enter into the space where they begin to have the potential to at least experience it, but then the metaphor becomes real. So it's not that metaphor is necessarily false, right? But it's it's a means by which you're trying to get someone to understand something. So for instance, right, like this thing about a society becoming possessed. Okay. Well, the problem is, is that people's understanding what possession is, like in quote unquote demonic possession, um, is very naive and very um, crude, mm. right? It's very naive and very crude. So when you talk about possession on, it's very hard to talk about possession on a larger societal level if you don't really understand how it works on a personal, like individual level. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. So the framework by which someone begins to give rights to spirits is actually very mundane, right? Yes. May, may I ask, oh, Father, just for the folks at home, is it right? So rights are basically, when we speak of rights, we're talking about the way in, in which someone acquiesces to sin. And that sin then begin, be, gives a quote unquote legal right for someone to be there or, or for a, a spirit, a demonic intelligence to have a proximity, an influence on a person, right? So if someone, you know, real basic stuff, everyone knows you play with a Ouija board and you don't repent of it, you don't confess it, you don't, you know, kind of renounce that, then you've given uh, a way for a demonic entity to have influence over you. Make sense? Like, mm -hmm. like, you you, yeah. you invite the vampire in. Yes. You invite the, well, you invite the, vibe, you, in, you definitely open the door mm. and, and say, you know what I mean? Because I, I think that's important <laughs> to, to say that because to some degree, um, like, yes, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to be contrarian with you. I, I just think it's not as easy as some people make it, but it's not mm -hmm. as hard as other people make it either. Cause you don't even necessarily to say here, come inside. I, 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 right. You know what I mean? You, you just buy, it's kind of like, Hey, um, you know, uh, if I'm hanging out at a place where there's like known violence and I get shot, it's like, yeah. well, yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't ask someone to shoot me, but, yeah, because uh, you know what I mean. I, I think that's mm -hmm. I think that's that distinction is important. Like it, you, you entered it. You entered into a situation where you were, let's say, aware of the forces at play. Yeah, yeah. And and, and it was it's that awareness that sort of yeah. gives the gives the rights. It's like okay, yeah. well, you agreed to be here because yeah. you agreed to be here. That's yeah, really when you're looking at like your guardian angel or the other guy and being like, eh. That's, yeah, that's which good. happens, which yeah. happens, right? But so anyway, so so that being said, um, it it begins with these small little suggestions and these little ways of thinking and being, and then if that progresses, it moves from thoughts to actions, and then from actions to like, you know, um, habits, and then from habits to what we call passions. It's like there you go. Each movement is an acquiescing, right? Each. Each little episode, to some degree, is like a little mini possession, right? So, you start, Father. You... Father, for, forgive me, forgive me. Before yeah. we, before we go on, I wanted to like this popped into my mind as like a, a a kind of a mundane example of this. And tell me if I'm if I'm if I'm on the mm -hmm. right track here because I so sort of like a, a a woman who goes out dressed particularly sexy mm -hmm. at, at night, right? And somebody's like, 
don't go out like that because you're gonna you're gonna attract the wrong element or bad things could happen to you and then from the other side right the angel and the demon and from the other side it's like nobody has a right to do anything to you and you have a right to dress however you want to dress yeah right right Right? and it's sort of like ah but you're not working to protect yourself right right that's right and the ego right the ego trip tricks the person in thinking no no what really needs to be defended is your right to do absolutely whatever you want that right. that is the right. culmination right. of your being right, right. is right. that you have right. this liberty right. and so that's very apropos here because this is where i think this is what we've been saying this is the trap this is the temptation on the right is that my liberty to do whatever is the ultimate expression mm-hmm. of what it means for me to be a human now you scale that up on a, on a larger level. And then what you have is you have people operating according to themselves in the, in, in the highest obvious good, even though that highest and obvious good is, um, you know, what is the standard of good? Well, we would say it's Christ, his teachings in the life of which culminates in the life of the church. Right. Um, but let's just look at, you know, for instance, um, this moment, you know, of of transition when the uh, the Russian folk became possessed and became the Soviet the the Soviet Union, and you know Saint Sophroni, he talks about, you know, he was um, he talks about when he was younger, he lived in a time when he was he was listening to a older priest he was a young boy at the time he was listening to an older priest who was speaking about the ancient martyrs and he was very inspired this 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 priest was inspired by speaking about the ancient martyrs and Sophroni is saying how he he was pondering how people at that time were like oh that's interesting but people just don't have that type of life now people would never give their lives like that and in fact, but they had no, but they had. Well, well, well here's the thing. Already, here's no? the thing. No, they hadn't. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. He's like, you know, this this was interesting. And he says it was, you know, 15, 20 years later that the revolution ah, happened. Ah, okay. Right. This is what he's saying. And he's saying people who thought that could never happen, those were times of an ancient time, and the world is so much more sophisticated, all these things, right? He's like, it was only 15 years later, 15, 20 years later that in fact, we saw these things happen, right? I find that very illuminating because in almost every way now, you know, instead it's not even like 15 years, it's like less than that, you know, we see what's happening. I'll tell you a little quick story. It, 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 it may be a bad tangent, but I hope it relates. I remember um, my wife and I, having dinner uh, with a gentleman. This is when we were still evangelicals. And um, we had dinner at his house with his wife. And I remember very clearly talking with him um, and saying like, well, you know, I don't know. I I could see, I could see a potential of, of us being invaded or being attacked here, right? And I'll never forget this. And I remember he was just like, just not, what would the, like, what would the word be? Not offended. He just became just taken Like in, in, cre- incredulous. Yeah. Incredulous. He's like, no, that could never happen here. That could never happen here. Right. And I was like, I don't know, guy. I don't know. You know, uh, and I then, mean, Father, forgive me, but the the truth of the matter is, it will happen. Well, hold on. It's guaranteed the truth of the ma- when no, it happens. When it happens, me. is a matter. Yeah. Forgive me. Forgive me. The truth of the matter is, it did happen because it was. Fair it enough. was less than a year later. Nine eleven happened. Wow. <laughs> right. Did it you still know that guy then? You know, he sends me. I don't check Facebook, so no one bothered to go there. But he'll still send me. Uh, you know, he has he sends me the same birthday greeting every year. You know what I mean? Okay. But did you get to like really go stick it to him afterwards? After no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just, not. I'm not that. No, I've, no, I've no. never been that guy. But no. I kind of want to be sometimes. But anyway, so 
Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that anyways, that's just like a little snapshot. And that's that's I mean, that was just whatever. That was me just, you know, at that time. So I just think that that's interesting because, you know, now think about it now. Think about how everyone emotionally is is enraptured in this event, which understandable understandable right but that's that's part of the thing is being so quickly kind of enraptured caught up into it that's that's the beginning stages yeah. of, of people really shifting um into this kind of like nah nah i don't i don't care man it's it's x y and z and i'm like Ooh. yeah well i find it interesting <clears throat> On that, it's it's it is interesting. On that note, from both sides, of the the lack of again the lack of sobriety. Mm. So there is a lack of sobriety, as we were saying, with QAnon and the QAnon types. And I think the there was there's a definite there's been a definite undercurrent of a narrative as it relates to Trump that is messianic in nature. No, 100%. like that he that he's some sort of anointed one. Right. Which is the Messiah. Right. That he's that he's been anointed by God to do X, Y, Z. And that's part of the narrative. But on the other side, and that's not sober because it's like, yo, you, you need to be real careful about what rights you're giving when you're going to when you're going to say he, this is a false prophet, because it's like all it's going to take. Hold on. I'm glitching. All it's going to take is some catalyzing event where that is like reified to people enough that people actually believe it, that like, it's not a game. It's not just to get likes and whatever. It's not just for you to wear a shirt and a hat and go to a rally and feel good. It becomes something else. And I think by the same token, time magazine just published a cover where they had Trump's face morphed onto Hitler's. And it's like, yo, be Ooh, real careful oh, man. calling somebody Hitler all the time yeah. because for the same reason, yeah. something is going to ca- be catalyzed and, and you'll get Hitler. Yeah. Why are you, why are you, you summoning Hitler? Why you, are you summoning Hitler? Did you see his little see Kyle went on his way out? Well, yes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, they, and now they're like, Oh, Oh, we actually, oh, because here's your Reichstag fire. Yeah. Because here's, like, do you that's, do you want to summon Hitler? Is, is that what you're trying to do? You're playing with the Hitler Ouija board? What are you doing? Yeah. But, like, that's, and Man. I think that's, like, I think you just conveyed exactly what I've been trying to say to people since this thing happened, is it's just, like, you guys are setting up this giant role just waiting for someone to fill it. You've you've created this huge thing, and who is the dictator going to be? And the people on the right are going to say it's going to be old Biden, and then the people mm-hmm. on the left are going to be say it's going to be Trump. And it's like, and I think that one of the central messages of Royal Uh-oh. Path, and I could be wrong. Wait, did I just lose you? Did I just lose Andrew? Can you still hear him, Father? Yeah, yeah. Can you guys? I can't hear you. You can't hear us. Dang! Oh, it's me. It's me. Uh oh. It's. Yeah, me. it's- it's okay. You're glitching out a little bit. It's okay, me. buddy. Hang in there. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, no, the audio's gone. But this gets into that whole. I mean, we were talking like chaos magic, and mm-hmm. <laughs> it, I, I just think that part of the problem with the narrative, obviously, is that you have a whole segment of people on the one side, and they, it, it's like. It, like I always say, people think Antichrist is the five hundred pound black that's, crack yes. smoking lesbian. Sorry, you know what I mean that's and, that's what I wanted to say, and, and it, I think that one of the themes. I'm sorry, Father, forgive me, because this is probably not as as profound as I think it is. But I think one of the central tenets of Royal Path, especially the last year, year and a half, maybe that we've done it, is like the danger is not on the left. The danger is not going to come from there. Like it's always going to be, it's going to be circled back around. And so like, it's, it's almost like a double whammy. They got you coming in going because there's many on the left who were deceived. Right. And then now they're of the elect. And now on the right, there are many of the elect who are being deceived Mm -hmm. because there's people I know and I love that are wholly caught up in 
this man's got some angels. He's got some angels looking out for him. Those well, I mean, angels the miraculous, the, the miraculous has been proven. The miraculous has that's been proven. That's it. That's it. In front of the multitudes. In front of the multitudes, the miraculous has been proven. And it, it's just, it's really tough too because, you know, again, I was like, ah, oh, you know, just really praying because it's like, I don't know what's going on. I, know, I don't, none of us know what's going on. That's not about trying to claim what's going on. But I just know that there are things that um, everyone wants to forget the things that kind mm -hmm. of gave them pause, the things that gave them just that critical, just that sober eye. Mm -hmm. So much of that's getting chucked out the window now. Mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that's, that's like a real problem, you know, because for instance, like, this the whole Hegelian dialectic thing, right? And so I just want mm -hmm. to kind of get back to some of this too. People think that when you talk about the occult and you talk about, you know, um nefarious agents and 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 the enemy and all these things, right? They just have in their mind these very stereotypical television show stuff, right? They think about you know, the kind of inverted Scooby-Doo kids that came out of Hot Topic and they're they're doing some kind of like black candle thing over in the woods. You know what I'm saying? They have these like very, again, naive ideas about who who really moves in these circles. Right. Now, that being said. With this Hegelian dialectic thing, it's like, you know, one of the things that that. I'm going to be real explicit with it because it's tough, right? Because I don't like, like, I personally don't like to get too embroiled with politics in, in the way that people would understand it because of the, 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 the kind of sucker's game that it ultimately gets into, which is one of the core things, the role path here, right? But let me just kind of say this for the record. Politics in the way that it really works Right. And the way that it really works, not the way that people think, think it works, but the way it really works, it is a type of magic. Yes. It 100%. Is, it is. 100 it, is, it is a type of magic. And philosophy is a type of magic. Yes. With a K, right? Magic yes. with a K. Yes. And so that's one of the things people just don't understand. Right. Right. Well, the philosopher's stone, right? The philosopher's stone. Is there a quick and easy delineation you can make between magic with a C and magic with a K so we don't go down like a rabbit hole? But just when we say magic with a K, we're talking about, you know, the movement into the spiritual, the metaphysical, mm -hmm. right? The, the, when you actually start thinking about people trying to use their will to change reality, okay? Mm -hmm. um, to impact reality. Whereas magic with the C, you know, that's kind of like Zatanna. Card tricks and <laughs> like tricks. illusions, pulling a rabbit out of yeah, a hat. Yeah, yeah. Illusion, like an yeah. illusionist, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so so that being said, you know, um, the reality is, is that that dialectic is promotes this. For instance, what are you talking about? That's what I'm talking about, right? The the person, like what Cyprian just said, the, the person who's like, I hate Trump, right? And he's Hitler. Well, you are the other side yes. of of the the kind of if 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 I'm gonna put like red and blue, right? Conservative liberal, right? One grabs one end of reality, the other one grabs the other one, yeah. and they no go they pull apart to open up mm -hmm. the fabric. Does that make sense? That's right. That's exactly right. And they, they both exactly open right. the hole for the fabric for you know the evil ones to just manifest. Right, because the key thing here yes. is manifesting that these things would be manifest and make manifest on the earth. Right, that that is that's the purpose. Right, that's the purpose mm -hmm. on the individual level. It's the purpose on the larger social societal level, and that's that's why when people are like, "Oh, whatever," um, the only ones who 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 do not participate in it are the ones who, in their truest sense you know, have their allegiance to Christ where they do not mm -hmm. conflate. They do not play games. They do not care about 
you know, people's running definition of it, right? So in other mm -hmm. words, that's what Orthodox Christians are supposed to be, but we see very clearly that's not the case, right? Because we see, you know, if possible, even the elect would be deceived. So we see many people just being like, no, 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 man, this is, this is, this is, this is the moment. This is a game time moment. I'm like, I mean, it is, but man, again, not like, you well, this is, is the, this is the, um, wait, I Soros. Just, Sor I just really want to go ahead. Father, it's game time, but not in the way you think it is. Yeah. I think that that's just important. I'm sorry, Cyprian. Yeah. Like, please continue. But I think that that's really important because it's, there's, well, there's, Ultimately, because we believe in truth, there's a correct way to see this situation. There's a correct understanding. There's a, a phronema, a correct phronema that you can ha you're supposed to have as an Orthodox Christian mm -hmm. to kind of be able to perceive truth, at least the outlines of it, because that's really that's typically what, how I think of. Well, I know what it's not. It's, and it's definitely not what they say it is. And I think that acquiring that phronema is allowing people to see it. And then in, and I'm sure I'm off kilter about it in many ways, but there's a central tenant, which is, I just don't believe what they say, what they're saying is going on. And, and then anything else I'm pretty much open to with the caveat of only Christ really knows. But the point is, is that like when someone is looking even to the right or the left of it, that's they're seeing the thing still, but they're just not seeing it correctly. And, and it's like, and then because of the particular inclinations that that person has politically, quote unquote, speaking, mm -hmm. this person's going to be jaded or shaded one way or the other and see it from this. Because what I'm ultimately I'm trying to say is it's important for me, at least to say there's just an incorrect way of seeing this. There's an incorrect way of viewing the situation and believing the popular narrative, believing what's being presented is it's just it's ludicrous and it doesn't make much sense. And it fails to recognize some of the overarching themes that we've witnessed at least since 2020 of like the, the invasion more or less, you know, that's already been here, but. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things like there's a couple of different ways. I think maybe this might be helpful. I don't know. I think there's a couple of different camps or, or ways of thinking you could look at this. Right. So there's the obvious side of, you know, the kind of blue left. Right. And the blue left is like, you know, this is all like they are kind of, you know, the ones who were, oh, you're conspiracy night, conspiracy night. Now they are kind of moving into like, oh, this is all kind of like drummed up, all this and that. You know, that's one way of someone looking at it. There's the other way of looking at it of like, you know, the this is the, you know, the deep going after it and, and really going for it. You know what I'm saying? Um. And then, you know, there's the side where it's like, you know, yes, but it's the whole thing is is cooked up. Like, who knows? Like, the whole giant thing is. And it is in some sense, it's like all are kind of valid and, and all kind of don't really matter. Right. Yeah. Because what what is what is the, the end result here? And, and I think I think this is, again, what drives kind of people crazy because it, it, it isn't the the clean you know, black hat, white hat thing that people want to have. But, um, you know, I'm just going to say this is the big thing is none of this is preparing people to to lose. This is like Christians, right? Christians. Like, if you aren't preparing to lose, then you're not really, you're not on the right tip, right? So, for instance, right, let how do, how do you want to play this out? You want to play this out where um, this, you know, kind of resurgence of, I don't know, like Byzantium in America, like American Byzantium and, or, you know, uh, the, you know, the, all the, all the enthusiasts who like are overweight and out of shape <laughs> who think like, no, forgive me. I'm like, I just want to be that guy. Sure. Right. Like you, there's a lot of people who own guns who don't know how to shoot them, right? And there's an even larger contingent of people who own guns but are so out of shape, but they think just because they have a lot of guns and ammo that they're going to do something. And I'm just like... 
you got to carry those guns, son. I, I really don't. Have, think you, have we, you been rucking? Yeah. Have you been doing a, a rucks with ninety pound yeah, a really rucksack on your back? I really don't think a lot of these people understand how that how this plays out. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so with that, you know, let's just even say you got it all tied in, and you know, you've been red on in it and all that stuff. It's like if like if you're in the church, right? Because this is who we're addressing. What's going to happen when you close your eyes that last time? Like, I, I'm being totally serious. And I think that's the thing that's never talked about, you know? And it's not like there's all these different opinions on that. We're orthodox. There's only one opinion, right? If you're in, you know, this is, again, one of the big things of our project, right? It's like, if you're an orthodox Christian and you're not here for salvation and healing and union, right, with Christ, because all those things are what, is offered right but ultimately it's about union with christ if you're really not here for that then like you're not you're not really you really shouldn't be here yeah right because you trying to to save western civilization and and save america isn't going to save your soul and and i'll I'll just i'll just it and by the way this is it's so funny because people are like oh so you guys are lefties you guys are lefties and i know there's people think that's like quite the opposite man no, you know, I got I got more kids than any of you, uh, people who clickety clack. Like I I want a, a future and a hope for my kids, but I, the future and hope for my kids are found in the one who, once the body has been destroyed, can also put the soul into hell. And you know, I'm just being really frank here in the fact that if you're getting wound up, and you're getting wound up, and you're getting your eyes off of yourself. Right. And onto the outrage, this this is how you start multiplying that effect in the thousands and going into the million. That's how you get a society getting back to the original point. That's how a society flips. And then you got stuff popping off that like you thought would never happen. You know what I mean? Um, and may God help us, you know, may God help us if if we who are the ones who've been chosen, truly chosen to be peacemakers, blessed are the peacemakers who should be called the sons of God. Right. If we, mm-hmm. if we go like, well, here's my peacemaker right here, Johnny, you know I mean? <laughs> right, right, if right, we, right. <laughs> it's like, you know, all, all jokes aside and I'll just kind of shut up and we can dial back into some more, like, I, I know people like, more action on action items on stuff maybe this is all too abstract for them but this reality of you know the kind of environment the lack of sobriety of the of the environment and the nature of it right the nature of the confusion um and the mm-hmm. frustration that comes from being confused and just being like i i just i gotta pick a side i just gotta do something it's like that's 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 part of the trap that that's part of the mm-hmm. trap, you know, that's part of the trap that gets you. And I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not talking about being disenfranchised or being apathetic, I, not at all. Um, but what I am saying is you cannot lose yourself in these times. You, you cannot mm-hmm. give way to the thing. You can't give away the most important aspect of life in these times because because well, eternity is at stake you know i mean that's saint lazar i mean like that's you have to be prepared to lose and you know saint lazar is we remember him because he lost you know in an earthly sense yeah like he wasn't trying to like you know make himself out as this you know more important than what he was he just was he was uh just a man who's willing to die for christ mm-hmm. and choose the eternal kingdom mm-hmm and that, but that's a big that's a big aspect of this moment is like the desire to be on the winning team. That's been that's been the undercurrent of like everything, like the whole movement in the world is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgive who's got to win and who's got to lose. Forgive me, I just want to say this because you're hitting it. Right Go ahead. Now. I think where people get confused is being on the winning team does not mean you're on the on on the side of Christ. Like that, that's right. that, that's the thing is people conflate winning with being with the good guys and like winning. I was watching this thing real quick where they're talking about um, Mark Zuckerberg right before this happened. He 
like I, what did he do? He released um, something with Meta. He basically allowed Trump. He like like took all the bans off of Trump, whatever, right before yeah. uh, the assassination attempt, which is interesting timing, whatever. But I was watching this analysis, and they're talking about like, well, who knows why? But ultimately, it's like he's probably just you know realizing he's getting killed. Like they they have no influence anymore. X is killing them. All this all all these other alternative media is killing them. They're not influential like they like they used to be. They just want to make a good business move. Right. By, you know, trying to allow the most popular, influential guy in politics back on. Right. So the reason why I'm, I'm bringing that up is because, again, he just wants to win. You know what I'm saying? He's probably like, hey, you know. Well, it shows it shows, Father, forgive me, that there was never any moral or ethical reason for the bans in the first place. No, it was no. it was just about siding with whoever was in power so that you could be the winner. And I think that it I think that this is the so what I was gonna say before that 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 is is interesting and it ties right into this like where this idea of like your view should be on your death. Uh and and the the sort of the the temptation to fall into spells and that is George Soros. So like hit you know people are like Oh, Soros, he's been behind all of these things and all of these movements and, you know, with the BLM stuff and he's doing all of this with open society. And it's like, <clears throat> but but people don't take the time. And it's like right there. And Soros has been completely open to the fact that he is he is actively saying that he's a magician, mm. right? Like his his opus is called the alchemy of finance. Mm. And in it, he talks about like his magical uh, framework. And he calls it the theory of general reflexivity. And it, it's it's it basically is like make America great again or one of these things where he mm-hmm. says you can say a statement. And this was sort of, Andrew, what 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 uh, you were talking about. But it's like we we will where, where it's like, oh, don't believe what the narrative is. But I think oftentimes people mistake these narratives as though these narratives are descriptions of reality. But they're almost never a description of reality. This is people misunderstanding it. It's not like, it. yes, they're, they're prescriptions for reality. For reality. Yeah. Yeah. So like the example that Soros gives is like the statement, this is a revolutionary movement. Mm-hmm. He's like, you can't falsify that because it hasn't happened yet. Mm-hmm. Like you can only falsify that statement after after the result is in Right. Just like you can't falsify make America great again. Mm -hmm. You can't say that Donald Trump did or didn't make America great again because it's like, well, he's not done. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same way of being like Donald Trump is protected by angels. Mm -hmm. You know, like you you can't. It's it's a reflexive statement Mm -hmm. to where like you put that out there and then you you look to see, oh, well, it does he keep winning? Mm-hmm. And by but by you saying that he is, mm-hmm. but it's the same thing of Donald Trump as Hitler. Mm-hmm. It's also like you can't falsify it. Mm-hmm. It's like you got to wait. But by doing those, whenever you make those statements and participate in those narratives, you make it happen. Well, the thing is, is that people often forget. I mean, the way that this works is, you know, it's subjective in the sense that the reality of let's say Hitler, right? Well, you had a whole nation of people. You had a whole nation of the access powers that were like, this is great. And they legitimately thought it was great. And even now you have the whole segment of people. Well, otherwise he couldn't come to power. I think that's the thing that people forget. Exactly. Exactly. Otherwise, if people didn't think he was great, he couldn't have come to power. (laughs) And you have a whole whole segment of people now who are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the most misunderstood character. He actually was great. Right. And then, and then you see, so, so the doubling, right, the, this kind of the back and forth, the confusion, the turning, right, that's one of the hallmarks of it is that this instability, this inability to really see the thing for what it is, right? Let me, I hate to do it, but I just want to go there. Like, you know, for those of you who have had this experience, you'll go great. For those of you who haven't, you'll just think I'm crazy, which is totally fine. It doesn't matter anymore. Um one of the things that's interesting is if you ever have if you've had an encounter this is not an odd experience of encountering just make it plain like a demon and there's an inability to see there's a shifting that 
that happens. You can't really, you know, this happens. There's a cut. Well, that that manifestation, right? That manifestation is it's 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 a true it's it's a true seeing. What I mean by that is your eyes, right, are just the vessel by what your your noose, your your the inner eyes actually seeing. If this makes sense, right? So the the instability, that fluctuation is like a proper manifestation, right? Because the angels, right, are constant, right? So when the fallen ones, you know, when 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 they became the fallen ones, right, that that their constant nature now is evil, but that evil is not constant in the way that the holiness of God is constant, right? So this is why our our nature, right, is so susceptible to them to have their psychology imprinted on us because we are unstable like that. So there's this kind of unfortunate mirroring that begins to happen, especially if you aren't in a place of prayer, in a place of repentance, purification, right? Because purification moves you to illumination and illumination moves you to deification. Well, that purification purifies you of those things that cause you to be in flux. That's part of the problem with the passions, right? And all this ties in because People who are getting caught up in this are people who are not dealing with, like, it's the passions. The passions are getting riled up and the passions make you passive to whatever that thing is. Anger, outrage, fear. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you, and then your nature is is in flux, right? So I'm saying all that to say the, con the, the confusing nature of all this is part of how you know what's going on. Like, it isn't just about all the different kind of, well, actually, you know, this whatever operation, you know, Dingledorf said that the government was going to do, you know, intelligence agency programs. That's all fine. But let me just say this too: intelligence agencies and their programs, whether it's through, you know, mind control, whatever the thing is, all that is inspired by the demons too. Yeah. Right. And and one hundred percent. Yes, it's right like, there. I I know. Like I'm I'm just I'm just saying. I know that there's going to be some voices who are like, oh, come on, man, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just telling you, right? I'm just telling you, um, it. the influence is far more reaching than a lot of people want to admit. And I, I think part of it is because it just, it's, it, it's too frightening to, to acknowledge that. You know what I mean? And and I, I, I get this, right? I, I get this. Um what was it? Uh oh my goodness. Who was it? I was just reading the other day, but he basically was saying, Oh, it'll come to me later. But it was it was it's a father, and he was saying how, you know, basically a monk who's disobedient doesn't need a devil because they've already given right. so I I get all that for sure, for sure, right? But let me just kind of say why this is different because we're we are talking about the world powers, and yes. the and Lucifer is the prince of this world, yes, right? That I don't think people understand that that is not a passive thing, right? Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the life of believers. We're not talking about the life of Orthodox Christians. We're not talking yeah. about people who have had their eyes open and are in the battle for like purification. And, mm -hmm. and like, we're talking about people whole hog who they are senators and doctors and, yep. you know, lawyers and all these people. And, you know, I'm not saying that they got there because of the devil, but I'm just saying that these I'll people. I'll say it. Some of them. <laughs> some of them. Yeah. Without a doubt. I've been, I've, yeah. I've, I've been there. I've been, they yeah. certainly didn't get there in spite of the devil. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 people don't get there because they're so brilliant. Like that's no. that's a that's another thing too. So, you yeah. know, this is I ju I'm just saying all this because if you have this in mind, right? If you have this in mind, what what is what is the whole point, right? My whole point is like, please, people, be discerning. Please, people, be sober. Don't you know? Now is the time to really just be calm and be cool and be like. Okay, be prayerful, right? Because the deeper you kind of go into it, 
and go into it on that level of trying to get analysis from people who are caught up in the web themselves, that's just going to, you know, facilitate a, a deeper acceleration of, of confusion, a deeper acceleration of frustration, right? Now really is the time to kind of step back and to pray and to really, and what I mean by pray, I mean like being in the presence of God to allow your inner eye to become kind of like clear and to really begin to see what's, what's happening around you. And what, what the practical, what will happen is you'll see loved ones, you'll see, you know, colleagues, you'll see neighbors and just like, you'll notice how like ramped up people are going to start being mm -hmm. just hair trigger ramped up, just whether they're nervous, whether they're scared, you know, whether they're angry and that's the time to really, um, be very, you know, prudent in your conversations. Be prudent in, in you know, not being, uh, not taking the bait to some degree. Yeah. And again, remember, the point is not to take the bait either way, right? Either That's right. way, which is, it's getting- well, we're, we're coming hard. around, Father, forgive me. We're coming around again, as we have been saying, to the fact that the last four years was the trading level. Mm -hmm. The last four years was the warm up and the and the training level for for the real thing that was to come, because like as hypnotized as people were in 20, 21, 22 on one side, the other side to and, and adopting their, their new religion. Now, the other side is going to adopt the the other yeah. flip side so of that sides. new religion that, by the way, both involve the same leader, folks, both the dude who brought you the doohickey, the dude who brought you the poke and brags about it is now the Messiah. Just keep that in mind, folks. He was the Messiah of one side and now he's the Messiah of the other side. So keep that in mind, folks. So so I would just say, you know, some people may not understand something. I'm, I'm trying to be that guy. But, you know, I, I I remember someone who I love, you know, very much. But I remember presenting to me like, I don't know, man, look at all these things. And he sent me like how his mom's name is Mary and his what's his dad's name, like Christ John or something like, you know, what I'm talking about all the weird little coincidences that people kind of like, this is interesting. You know what I mean? And so that case for him being an anointed one or the anointed one, you know what I mean? Christians, Christians, and really being like, Hey, look at this. And it's kind of like, when we say people looking at him as like a Messiah, it's, it's not necessarily a hyperbole. Like there's mm -hmm. people who really look at, I mean, no, no I'm could, being literal father. I'm yeah, being very could, literal, right? Now. We could look it up and we could, you know, pull up all these things that people say, look at all this stuff that's happened. Um, and, and, you know, no small amount of it is, um, the David camp accords and all that stuff. Like all that is, is, is part of the mythology now. And so, no, well, I mean, you know, that's, I, I think the, oh man, oh, Cyprian goes, all the thought locked my head. So it must have not have been needed to have been said, but yeah, that was, it's just that whole you're saying that his parents' names, the yeah, 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 people Mary like, and John. Yeah, if you if you look it up, yeah, this is the I earthly mean, leader that they're looking for with Christ. Yeah, but they, like, but they, I mean, they really make these correlations. Like, there's, a, I've seen it. Like, you know, again, one of those moments we probably should I mean, do pre-production, I guess. But that's a that's a two way street, right? Because I mean, what is my thought? It's a two-way street that's like, okay, yeah, he does have all these messianic traits, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. But like that I can't remember the point I was trying to make. There's something there that like it's like, yeah, but that works both ways. Mm -hmm. You can't be like just because these things are similar to Christ. Well, look, which, look, I mean, no, that that should be that should be exactly what makes you like, like, like that's what should that's go what in the other direction. I know, that's what I'm saying, because <laughs> so we've instance, already had check this Messiah. Out. Like I was yeah. thinking about this. Right. So one of the things that, you know, there's some things that. Oh, remember, my gosh, I can't remember, but we were talking about um, one of the problems 
is that so many Christians don't have a kind of anthropological, sociopolitical lens to see Christ, right? And so a lot of people may even think, you know, and it goes, again, everything goes both ways, right? Because some people will look at how we're talking, but you guys are fundies, you guys are fundies, whatever. But then there's there's other people who, you know, they're, they're, they think like, what are you talking about? You know, and, and they're actually kind of fundies on that sense. But what I'm getting at is this, Christ isn't just relegated to the realm of like religion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Christ, Christ is right. And so that affects every aspect of, of life and reality. That's part of the problem is the dichotomies, right? Like everyone has, wants to insert a dichotomy. It's like Christ orthodoxy, like over here, Sundays, um, you know, when it comes to this and this and that, but when it comes to this over here, well, not so much, right? And so what, what I'm getting at is when you start looking at, like, who was Christ to the powers that be at the time? So what are the levels of the power to be? So at the, the you know, macro meta level is the devil and all the fallen ones, okay? Who the world was enslaved to, Okay. And then you drop down from there, and then it was like the nation of Israel, right? Um, because the nation salvation comes to the to the Jew first, right? So the nation of Israel, because they were the chosen people, and they were chosen for a particular job, right? The particular job was to bring forth the Messiah through the Mother of God, okay? But also to be a light to the nations, right? All this is important, right? Or because that's how salvation for all of mankind is to come, right? Are you following me? And then the layer underneath that was Rome. Was Rome. Are you, are you following me? Yes. So so the problem is that people maybe will invert that and they'll make Rome be the bigger player. You know what I'm saying? But sure. really Rome was like, Rome was lower underneath all that. If you follow my, you know, how I'm kind of breaking that down, right? Well, there so, would, you would have no power unless it was given to you. Right, right. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and clearly if we look at the crucifixion, it was, it was, the priest class that was determining because Rome was like, yeah, we're good. Right. Right. Pilate was like, I don't know. I could care the less right. one way or the other. Right. So he was being ruled by them. Right. And and you begin to see, you know, I don't know if this is where you're going to get another band episode, but you know, you begin to see too, where the, where they begin to kind of um, become enmeshed and play off each other. So for instance, the priestly class, right. Actually begin to kind of interface with the demonic. <laughs> right because it wasn't rome that crucified christ it was the jews right like i'm just that's just fact right and that's which father for, forgive me just quick uh break and the man that uh trump just announces his vice presidential pick has said uh i am a jew in spirit jd vance i mean it's gonna be a long episode tonight right so anyways so so the point i'm trying to get at is there's these things that you have to look at. And part of the problem with people want to make these associations messianic and good and Christian, all that stuff is like, and the reason why people like us have been like, something just isn't right is because there are things that you have to understand about Christ, which people too quickly betray Christ for the moralistic level. And that's essentially the problem. They betray Christ for moralism. Okay. So here's the thing. Why did they kill Christ? Why was Christ killed? Like on, on the Rome level, on that, on that first level, right? Because that's the real question. The real question is, like, why would Rome even, like, be bothered? Why did Rome even care? Did Rome care, right? To keep the peace, to keep the peace with the Jewish elite. To keep the peace with the Jewish elite. That's right? the reason. That is the reason, right? So if you begin to look at that, then then you have to begin to say, okay, well, part of what makes someone Christ-like is there is this tension between them and the quote-unquote powers on the political level. Mm -hmm. Are you following mm -hmm. me? Okay. Yes. So yes. here you go. Check, right? right? Because that's part of the right. problem with the narrative here is that like, it's just enough to be like, see, he's 
right? Mm-hmm. He's he's pricking the powers that be, which is true on a certain level. But right? he's one of them. Well, that's he's always getting, been one of them. But that's where we're getting to, right? Because when you go up to that next level, right? Right. <laughs> right. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Right. right. He's in that level. He's in that level. Yes, he's of the priestly class. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's and that's yes. the thing that people never understood. But it's like, look, man, that whole thing. Oh, about- father, father, father. Okay, wait, father, forgive me, because uh, I think that this will be helpful. Because the day before that, the big news was that the donor class was going to withhold from Biden's campaign ninety million dollars unless he dropped out. So it's like. Oh, so it's really the donor class that's in charge. Oh, Trump's in the donor class. Always has been. Always, Always has, has been. been. Always has been. And if you pay attention to things he's said, like again, everyone wants everyone wants to throw everything out now. But it's like, mm-hmm. why did he run why did he run quote unquote Republican, right? It's not because he was politically aligned as a Republican. No. He isn't. He isn't, right? I mean, there's so much we can go through that people are like, oh, this is like he's always been here or he's always been at this place, but he hasn't. Like his father, father, forgive me again. He just took a national abortion ban out of the Republican platform this year. He just took it out. It had been in there forever, my entire life that had been something in the Republican platform, and he just took it out. Forgive me, I didn't know that, but I'm not surprised because that's that's one of the points that I think people just, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying, and then and then we'll say to ourselves, oh, but you know, no one's perfect, and sure, no one's perfect, no one's perfect. However, right, one of the things of because if we're talking about people just kind of going all in, and the the kind of messianic level of it is like that uncompr that uncompromising nature. Mm-hmm. Right. Where you would see that kind of alignment to Christ. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, he demonstrates that on one level for people. Right. But mm-hmm. the reality of the reality of it isn't the case, though. See, this is mm-hmm. this is what I'm talking about, this kind of fluctuation. Right. Where it's like the, that uncompromising nature isn't across the board. It's just enough for someone who kind of doesn't look into things and be like, Nah, he's bad A, man. That's all that matters. And it's like, okay. You know, like if you're if you're measuring it by these things on a moralistic level, right? Because that's 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 a moral thing. It's like I like him because he's tough. It's like, okay. And that well, and and so then that's what you're gonna get. And that's you know, that that it was it was interesting as this whole thing was going on, like right afterwards. One of the key, so there were a few live streams that were going on, and one of them was Megyn Kelly, right? You know Megyn Kelly, former Fox News attractive blonde. She, it was interesting because like she had a monologue at the end of her show, so she it was live while this whole thing was going on, right? And she, I had remembered, but it was funny because I was listening to it, and my wife was in the background, and she goes, "Wait, who is that?" I said, "Oh, it's Megyn Kelly." She said. Wait, isn't she an anti-Trump person? Because she had been. Well, when he first ran, that was the whole thing. You know, they made that movie about all the Fox, the, the hot Fox News anchor women leaving because they were being sexually harassed. And she was among it was kind of like a little Me Too on the right. And Donald Trump was emblematic of this chauvinistic, you know, thing that was going on and blah, blah, blah. And she had been like against Donald Trump. And she was like, you know what? He's tough. What he showed, who would have done that? And he gave and he said, fight, fight. And I'm voting for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And I hope you go and vote now. Now I'm absolutely I would walk over. She said I would walk over broken glass to vote for Donald Trump. I said, that's all it took. That's all it took. A grazed ear. That's all it took. (laughs) What's his name? VD? VD? J.D. Vance. Oh, J.D. Vance, Vance. Whatever. Yeah. That that's the big thing was he was like anti-Trump. He was like he's like exactly. I was a never Trumper. I was a never Trumper. So so this narrative of people being like, hey, you know what? I was wrong. Look, look. When you got folks in the hood, 
and you got like the whole hip hop quotient being about. Oh, they're it. saying it's he's like, the first. He's really now he's the first black president. He's the first said, black president. Now he's been shot. Right? At. I mean yeah. the mug shot mm-hmm. thing. So like I'm just saying mm-hmm. it's like, and so maybe interestingly enough, kind of starting off where we were at. Maybe, maybe I'm the contrarian. I don't know, but not really. I just I look at all the stuff and it's like. Whenever people unite under a banner that ain't Christ on this yes. level, trouble ensues. Yes. Trouble ensues. That'd be a good shirt. Whenever yeah. people unite and, under and the, and the question is over what? Like what changed? What changed? Like nothing changed. Why? Because let's take it at face value. Why? Because somebody wanted to kill him? Somebody wanted to kill him. And but but the question becomes like for me, when I saw that, I was like, actually, if you were on the fence, this is the reason to be like, nope, because you know what? This is Donald Trump. You think that somebody trying to kill him is gonna make him a less authoritarian leader? You yeah. think it's gonna make him less paranoid? You think it's gonna make him less likely to be a tyrant? No, it's gonna amplify that like by 10x well the thing is all the people i mean all the people are ready for it all the people ready for like like man we're tired of this but like what are you tired of (laughs) thank you (laughs) You thank you like like, really let's start like breaking down what you're what you're tired of and what you know if you're so tired of it what are you doing in your own personal life about it do you see them nothing like i i think that's really the thing is that you know, really, what are you doing about it on your own on your own personal life? And again, here's the thing, right? Um, the fact that I even have to say this is part of the problem, right? Like mm-hmm. Joe Biden, like whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's that dialectic. That's the problem. That is that is the problem, you know. And that problem facilitates a whole nother world of things because, like, look, man. Uh, I'm just gonna say it, whatever, because this is this is where we're at. But you know, it's interesting that a certain hierarch wouldn't even wouldn't even appear to give the speech, whatever, what what, however it was four years ago. Do you remember? Do you know? Well, somebody I- said that somebody said that he spoke at the DNC instead. He spoke at the DNC instead. Instead. That's crazy. So you just Instead. flip in four years. You just flip. You just flip just like that. Well, you know, hey, if someone needs you to lay bricks and you're a bricklayer, you go where you need, right. whatever you need to lay bricks. Right. right. But that's I mean, to me, it, like seeing that today, I mean, I just I'm seeing all these things and it's just kind of like it's tough because I, I realize that it's it's. It's what our people kind of don't want to hear, you know. It's 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 what, you know, um, Orthodox, traditional Christians, blah 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 blah, don't want to hear. They don't want to hear this because, like, you know, like, nah, man, don't kill the momentum. And I'm just like, yeah, like, momentum yeah, but momentum towards what? what? Exactly. Yeah, momentum exactly. going towards, towards where? Blood. Exactly. Where's the end? Where's the end point? But I feel like this is the most important thing: is that nobody. Nobody is thinking about the end point. They're just like, oh, yeah, this next step. Now we go this next step. And it's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's no sobriety. There's no discernment whatsoever. And it's almost like, you know, people are going to say, people are going to look back and be like, oh, well, we weren't given time. It was like two days before the Republican National Convention. And everybody was just like riding the wave of what it is. And it's like, yeah, that's what you did with the masks, dude. Yep. Yeah. That's what you did with the lockdowns. Yep. That was your same excuse. Yep. Oh, we didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't have time to think about it. We were just reacting to this traumatic right. event. And it's like, yo, 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 did you not? You didn't learn yeah. nothing. Yeah. And the thing is, is the optics. I mean, there's just there's just so much, which I understand. You know, there's just so much to like, you know, especially if, listen, if you're living in the cyberspace, if you're living, which everyone is, which everyone is, right? And you're really, you know, it's just, it's really hard. It's really hard to resist. And 
it's hard because it's just, I know the thought is like, this is just, that's insane. Everything isn't, you know, staged or fake. And like, everything isn't staged and faked. And that's kind of my point, which brings me back to, to brings me back to possession. And people don't, you know, the interplay between mental health and all this, people, you know, I this is my own opinion, this is my own experience. But it, I think that from, from what I have experienced and what I have seen and what I continue to see being played out, um, is that it is a it is a it is a holistic thing, and that the dichotomies are are the problem, right? So it isn't like people who have mental health and you know mental health issues, quote unquote. It's just like well, they caught it like the cold. No, they didn't. They didn't catch that like the cold. That's why there's always a quote unquote moralistic dynamic to mental to to particular mental health issues right that's not a that's not a coincidence does that mean therefore that everyone has a particular mental health issue is you know demon possessed no that's not what i'm saying but at the same token um there is obvious spiritual influence and ramifications to said mental health problem right so how does this all play well it plays again wherever we were talking about earlier scale it up just scale it up so that individual, right? Look, when you give someone CBT, <laughs> right? Uh, you give someone DBT. What are you doing, right? You're 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 trying to help them, right? Reconstitute their way of thinking. Well, to what standard? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Duh. What standard are you reconstituting someone's thinking to, right? Well, if you are one of these, you know secularist clinicians then you just say well you know given societal standards well what are those societal standards based upon where did those where did those ways of thinking come from and if they're ever shifting and ever changing then do we just keep up like cognitive behavioral therapy courses to keep the person up with modern sure, societal thinking sure or or you do what they've begun to do and you begin to take certain things out of dsm and right. say and say, well, this is no longer really, you yeah. know, right. This is actually what we recognize. Yeah, the ins- the insanity has been norm. This particular been insanity normalized. has been normalized. Correct. So if you Correct. see that, it's not crazy anymore. It's Correct. just, uh, it's it's it, we we've a lot. We uh, that one slipped through. We lost control of that it's, demon. It's so getting, it's it, it's in the mix now. <laughs> that's right. It's that's getting right. harder and harder to not quote nineteen eighty four. Because, like, it just seems like it's so often it's just like, um, you know, the party made it so that, like, you having to lie to yourself was a norm. It was like it was this normal, mm-hmm. like, that was normal behavior. Um, and I think it's getting late because I keep losing my thoughts. But that's the point I was just trying. It's like, it's just, well, no, part of the goal of creating this kind of Society is one of them is you have to teach people to be able to like lie to themselves in a way that's almost like instantaneous. It's like the thing about. Well, and, oh, OK. Yes. It's like. Go ahead, re- Andrew. I'm sorry. Yes. No, no, no. I think the difference between gray matter in your brain and the matter in your spine that controls movement is, is that a reflex comes from the spine because it's quicker. Mm. So when you touch something hot, your hand recoils without gray matter ever getting involved. That's just all your spine. Like that's your Nervous spine. Seniors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it almost has to become this knee jerk thing. I mean, well, well, stop, Andrew. Think- stop, because you're onto something. This is the, the, this mm-hmm. I'm trying to articulate. Is. Again is, you really are. The problem is again. There's that there, we're having this dichotomy. It's all the same person. Yes. And, and this is where this is like the the kind of neo gnostic soup everyone is swimming in. Is that like your body's over here? Yes. Your soul's over here, and all this stuff. But like. Now take this and just scale it up, right? Mm-hmm. So again, people want to relegate the the event that happened with the assassination attempt. They want to take all these things and they want to put it in a category that doesn't really have anything to do with what we're talking about in regards of like deception, the demonic powers, like these these levels, right? And this is all just kind of like pointless and fruitless and whatever to talk about that. Because at the end of the day, I can't take my kid to the library. 
because nope. of what the wokes have done. I can't yep. do this. I can't do it. And like, here's the thing. I'm saying all those things because like, yeah, I, I'm in the same boat. I was in that boat before you were. You know what I'm saying? So. But what I'm saying is, is it's now the, the image I keep coming to my head is the Wu-Tang symbol. Do you guys know Wu-Tang? Yeah, like, you know, of course. Yeah, they're symbol. The, 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 w. The, w, the W that's like, it's yeah. Both like that, sides yeah. are complete now. Like both sides. Before it was firmly established over here, the rampart's been built over here now. Yeah. And it's like we have people that think it's perfectly normal and funny and socially acceptable to wear golden diapers as a means of like, uh, as a means of um, critiquing our current president. Like, and then we have the same people that are now participating, quote unquote, in events that mimic religious, uh, religious fervor and spiritual like sentimentality. And that's normal. This is the right thing. That's what I'm talking about is this instinct to n- instantly. There's a part in every in every person's journey into a cult where they come mm-hmm. to a spot where they have to think some stuff here is really not starting to add up. It's either time to bail or double down. And yeah, the, they got to take it out of their own DSM ju- to have a little is, callback. You got to take that. You got to take the red flag now. out. Yeah. I just have my little moment. Literally right before we started recording, sister and I were just talking about this. We were just talking about everyone has this moment Right, she was talking mm-hmm. about a friend she had that had this moment when he was dealing with the shaman. Was kind of like, "This is kind of weird," right? But began to double down. And I was talking about someone we all know, who right at the time, right at the the twenty movement, um, was talking about his parents who live on this like island, and he was like, "There's no cases, but everyone's scared." And he's like, mm-hmm. "But but just double down and just went with the whole thing." We were just talking about that. So well, there's the there's uh, there's a there's oh, an gosh, aspect. Great, forgive me tonight's the night I interrupt. Go. I just I just want to say is forgive me. Go, ahead, go do it. The thing that's important to understand that right here too is I just man people would not make the connection that that's movement into the occult though. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. that's the thing and that's what's happening here is that people don't understand like this is stop thinking in the lines of like on that low level of Rome. Scale it up. Mhm. Scale it up to like the prince of this world, and what does the prince of this it, world want? That you mo- see what I'm saying? That moment doesn't have to be the at the crossroads with the guy appearing in the all white suit who's got the contract, and you have to sign it in your blood. Like your rights can look very small and mundane. Like your rights further into this thing, into a, like a, to allow influence into your life, can look very small. You don't go from. Well, I don't really think politically one way or the other that that, you know, like a moderate to wearing golden diapers within four years like that doesn't happen. You don't go from that to that like those increments have to be slowly and like people have jumped on and jumped off at these certain points. But this is like a big moment of like um, like that of having to ignore some of the things especially the orthodox having to ignore some of the things we've been seeing in favor of this narrative that paints easy good guy easy bad guy uh the wokes are the problem they've always been the problem um we just need to eliminate the wokes and then in the parallels between the the earthly messianic figure that the jews were looking for and what we're looking for you know and it's it's you know it's not un- i guess i would say uncanny like it's it's pretty like no you guys are looking for your you're literally looking to make america great again in a sense of like but what does that funny. but what does that mean you said that's, it a long that's, time that's ago the Cyprian. no i think you have a definition you said a definition a long time ago on a podcast and it stuck with me because it's not the 50s Everybody it's the 80s it's, it's the 80s it's to return yeah, it's back to excess and wealth it's to return yeah. back to a time in which gas was in the single dollar, a single digit yeah. or double digits. Single digits. Uh, it's a time in which you can like where a measure, a person could be measured by their wealth and their success. I mean, think of like the Chad bro movement. I got two Bugattis. Like I got two Bugattis. I'm renting this house in Dubai. 
it's costing me 10,000. This is how I'm paying for it. This is exactly how you can do it too, even though you can't really do it. Like they would say you could do it. This is how you do it. Like it's a time. But, but you- Andrew, it was also a time of extreme social hypnosis. Like that's what it was, was it was everybody. And I think that one of the things that people, you know, the people who are like, how dare you? And, the, and this is going to be happening. People are going to be like, how dare you say that this was staged? Somebody lost their life. All these things. How dare you say it was fake? And I just want to just for one second, just completely sober, be like this to anybody who says, how dare you say that it was staged? OK, first off, this thing literally took place on a stage. OK, that's the that's the hold on. Hold yeah. on. Hold on. Hold bear on with me. Yeah. Bear with me. Just bear with me. It literally took place on a stage that had been meticulously set up. There were literally two cranes holding a giant American flag over this stage. There was a bleacher in the background where people had been specifically chosen and given signs. And the man who was standing on the stage was a reality TV producer and star, had participated literally in WWF WrestleMania as a wrestler, owned a beauty pageant, okay? So just, you're the one who's messed up. Yeah. Your default. <laughs> but also. Your default should be this is staged. And then you have to have it proven to you that it's that's not. That's lie. That's that knee jerk. Because everybody sees it. Everybody sees it. But it's a knee jerk. No, that can't be true. It can't be true because that, that boggles the mind. I, I'm saying I don't feel it. I see the spell for what it is, though. But, but, but it is a spell because you know what? You've crossed the line that you mentioned. Andrew, if if it's not yours, that is to tell you, have some self-introspection and be like, oh, darn it. I crap. I've crossed the line. And I think I've crossed the line. I'm in the cult now. And I think there will be people who probably take this opportunity to bail. They'll find new recruits, whatever, whatever. But I think that this is one of the bail out of the cult. I hope I hope they do. I hope they do. I think some of them will. And by the way. Just so we know, and just so we make this clear, let's all pray for the soul of that person that was killed. And there has to be hey, some kind man, of Hey, have you seen them? Have you seen them? No. Do you know them? No, I don't. Where did they go to school? Uh, let's talk to their family. Yes, but at the same time, I mean, ignorance is okay. It's okay we're in the monk who prayed to Saint Ascension. You know, That's and then the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even if that person, hey, is, hey, hey, the shooters, the, hey, and the shooter is a twenty-year-old guy who never posted anything on social media. Well, okay, of course. I mean, hey, I no social you know, media profiles, no nothing. To, as a twenty-year-old, I mean, the best American male. <laughs> speaking of twenty-year-olds, I love it. It's like they they get that kid. He's like, yeah, he was he was a loader, and then he's like, you know, kids these days. He's like, <laughs> it's like I have no what twenty-year-old. Says, I don't know, kids these days. You know how they are. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so, so <laughs> but that's that's what Look, I'm, saying. I'm just I, no, I, no, I am no. just I, I am just like, saying that this recognize... is when you're give when you're given all of the things, mm-hmm. when all of the things are right here, and you're like, How dare you? Yeah, how yeah. dare you, sir, say that this thing that took place on a st- at a yeah. staged on a stage was staged. How dare you, sir? Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing How is, dare is that- you call those people walking around on that platform? How dare you say that this is a play? How dare you say that this is not real life, that I didn't happen to walk into a whole bunch of people sitting in the dark watching a real live drama play out that they had no that the people on on that plank have no idea that there's all of these people looking at them. How dare yeah. you, sir? Because, again, watch this. The thing is, is that you go now and like, well, Look at all the different people. There is the and it's the this is the thing, right? It's like, oh, the Karen mom, she was like, hey, the person's climbing up the thing, blah, blah, blah. But like, look, man, this is what I'm talking about with the getting into those levels. You have to maintain certain things. You have to maintain, like, oh, see, the the deep states is gonna do everything that they can to like make this happen, right? Oh, yeah. And sure sure 
I'm, I'm not, again, this is the problem. Like, how do I, how do I say this? You don't, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of flip a little bit of what of what Cyprian said and and just kind of make it worse for everybody. Um, it doesn't even have to be staged. Mm -mm. It's kind of my point. No, right, exactly. Like it doesn't it exactly. doesn't have to be staged. Like that's my point. My point is like it doesn't even have to be staged because all of this is is really been positioned in such a way that it doesn't really matter how the thing plays out because everyone's yes everyone's conditioning is in such a way like for instance right i, I, I don't know this is going to work but i'm 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 trying to get a point across like there's this whole thing getting back to possession there's a whole thing where people like it's it's growing exponentially with people who are having to you know clergy dealing with people who are you know afflicted with diabolic influence, let's say. But there's this really interesting thing that I've personally noticed where people, they want to be freed from whatever evil influences in their life, but they don't want Christ. Mm. Mm -hmm. they, they, they want to be freed from the problems and the symptoms that have come from them being in the new age, you know, being what, whatever the thing is. Right. And sometimes it's not even that. Sometimes people are there because of, you know, they were abused, blah, blah, blah. I don't need to go in there and to be like, were you really abused? I don't need to go in there and to be like, you know what I'm saying? Because good point. Because the reality <laughs> is, is like they are in this space where they're not wanting Christ. I don't mm -hmm. I don't need to question their motives. Yeah. I just know that, like, mm -hmm. here's the solution. I, I, does, yes. does this make sense what I'm saying? Here, yeah, because here, it's a moot. If they don't want Christ, it's a moot point. It's a moot point. And I can, it's like, okay, you want me to say some prayers for you? You want me to do this and that for you? But unless you are confessing, mm -hmm. unless you are renouncing, unless you are closing those doors, those rights, mm -hmm. tearing up those rights that got you in the first place, it kind of doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense yeah. what I'm saying? It yes. kind of doesn't matter. And that's that's my big thing is like, yeah, I mean... You know, you got your Alan Moores who have been mm -hmm. bringing things into reality through V for Vendetta, through like, you know, mm -hmm. Watchmen, through all the stuff that he's that he does. Right. That's that's one side. Right. You got your actual. Magician, you Warlocks. got your actual mages yeah. like like doing not it. Not even right? shy about it. Talk, not even shy about it. Demons. Right. Not even shy about it. But then you have your other people who are on the other side who have been bringing it about. You know, the Time Magazine guy who's just like, oh, I hate this guy. He won't let me have my gay love. Reality TV producers. Re reality the TV producers, producers of like, Keeping Up with the Kardashians. All of all, everyone is is the only ones who aren't participating in it are the ones who have opted out. Who are the ones who have yes. opted out? The ones who have opted out truly are the ones who have given themselves allegiance to the Holy Trinity. Yeah. And I, I, I had to say that real quick because that was a moment, too. You know, that was a part of the thing with the Kanye thing. It's like, ah, you know what? It's not enough for someone to tell me Jesus. Yeah. Because you telling me mm -hmm. Jesus, who what Jesus? You telling me Jesus, you know, that's not right. it's not the Trinitarian God. It's not the same thing, right? Yeah. So I'm just saying, like, it, it starts getting like that. Because, listen, God's not a legalist, mm -hmm. but the demons are. Mm -hmm. And so these mm. little these little details, mm. that's where the devil's in. He's in these that's the loophole. They're looking for a loophole. Yeah. They're looking for the loophole. And so that's why it's like mm -hmm. all of this playing out, right? Everyone who's looking for the thing, they're still they're look they're still looking for the person to blame. Yes. Like look, the only people who get this are the ones who scale up. It's not Rome. Right. If if you want to fight with Rome, you're going to lose that fight. I'm going to tell you mm -hmm. right now. You know what I mean? Cuz you're drinking beers, you're eating pizza, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're watching Netflix, whatever. You're not gonna you're not gonna win that fight with Rome, right? You're just you're not gonna do it. Okay. You scale up into the pre C class, it's like, okay. So maybe you're beyond that and you think you kind of know what's going on. You've gone down a couple of YouTube rabbit holes, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? You're still a slave to your passion. You're still not actively doing a thing because you're still looking for, you know, the source of like, I want how do I win? How do I how do I build utopia? 
How do I, right? How do I, right? That's that's that level. The only ones who get out are the ones who scale up all the way. Listen, brought, you know, got a good friend, you know, local ally, whatever, great guy, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And, you know, total opposite end of the spectrum in regards of, you know, what side we represent. Because I could do that. I, see, this is a, something else I want people to understand. You know, I get the I get the reality of on a material level having allies. I, I totally get that, right? But let's just be really clear about something. There comes a point, and that's the, that's the thing is you got to know your point. There comes a point where it's like, for instance, this person's like, yeah, developed a relationship. It's good. You know, seeing things. Yeah, 2020, it's weird. Who's doing it? You know, getting on the conspiracy tip, talking about all the things. Great. You know, turn them on to Whitney Webb, all the stuff, blah, blah, blah. Right. But the thing is, right, for me, all that stuff, it's all just it almost doesn't matter. It all just kind of helps flesh it out a little bit. But ultimately, it's up here. It's Ephesians 612. Right. But my man, just like a lot of people, they think it's the bankers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? They think it's the bankers. They think it's this family. They think it's this cabal. You know, and and look, man, and when I talk about the bricklayers, the bricklayers are just the the meat. The, the, they are just the vessels, right? They're, but they're not even running the show. Like, you got to understand this, right? Got, oh, yeah, Father, you, but you, Father, you can't even understand the bricklayers if you're operating at the level below Ephesians 6.12. And that's the problem. People will be like, oh, the Masis, the Masis. You're like, oh, well, talk to me about the rituals. And they're like, huh? Uh-huh. Huh? It's about how they're acting in the world. And it's like, no, 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 dude. How they're acting in the world is just emblematic of what's going on behind closed doors in the spiritual realm yeah. that they're in the things that they're invoking and being told what to do. And yeah. again, pretty obviously, like they don't even begin yes. to hide it. Like, well, they do hide it, but they also don't. They hide it in their secrecy. And like, that's the part is like, there's the pawns. That's the different levels of the players of chess. There's like pawns and then there's bishops and knights and rooks and all that yep. stuff. And then you can kind of keep getting, but eventually you need hands to push it. Like you need hands mm-hmm. to like move their little pawns around. And that's who we're talking about. Like that's, that's what Ephesians six twelve is talking about is the forces that move those things by looking at the chess pieces themselves and being like, look at the power that resides within this little piece of like wooden or stone mm-hmm. or whatever that this piece mm-hmm. is made of. Well, that thing in and of itself has no power. You know, there's this mm-hmm. there's this movement that happens. <clears throat> Let me try to illustrate this for for some people, and it, and help me, guys, if I get lost, like I always do. Forgive me. Um, but I just want to illustrate something. So, again, like we do this project, like let's just be clear, right? We all got kids. We all got so. So this is we're we're really trying to actually communicate something. Like, and I don't care. You know what I mean? I I had to say that because I'm about to expose something, right? I don't really, I I know that a lot of people don't really have an insight into how the spiritual life actually begins to be played out on deeper levels because they're doing the best that they can. And this isn't me, you know, they're they're doing the best they can to go to church. Maybe they go to Vespers and they go to confession, you know, once a month, once a year. Like I, I get it. Everyone's at a different pace. You know, you're trying to work your job. Um, it's hard, you know, because inflation, I, I get all that, right? But I just want people to follow me on something. There is a process, at least now, I can't speak for 100 years ago. I wasn't alive then. I can't speak about, you know, how they do it in Thessaloniki because I don't live there. I'll tell you about here, okay? There is a movement where someone will, will come out of... um real obvious sins from like the left hand, let's say Um, promiscuity, maybe, you know, perversion, um, drug addiction, alcoholism, violence. You know what I mean? Real obvious stuff. Okay. And that's real stuff to work through. Don't get me wrong. It's real stuff to work through. Okay. But that progress, if someone sticks with it, they want Christ, they want to change. Okay. There comes a point where it's like you move past your porn addiction, your self-abuse problem, and then you're faced with this thing. And those those of you who know I'm talking about, you're going to nod your heads. But a lot of people don't know this, right? 
you begin to realize, oh my gosh, I am so judgmental. No, no, listen to me. I am so judgmental. Oh my gosh, I'm so I am so vain. I do everything to have people's um applauding me. I do every I'm I'm it's crazy how I'm motivated because I want people to like me and respect me. Right? Um oh it's crazy. Like I am so proud, right? That I don't care what people think to the point where I'll step on them. Right? So why why are you saying this, Father Turbo? This is why I'm saying this. That's that's part of the problem that people since people don't know that. So bring me back, guys. I just I, I need to digress, right? You may think I'm good with God because I'm not a heroin act anymore, because I'm not sleeping with, with 50 guys every six months. And I, you know what I mean? You may think you're good, and that's great that you're not doing that, right? But you know what? The outside of the club, the outside of the cup is one thing. The inside of the cup is a different thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why we say, well, orthodoxy is the true church. It's the true faith. Not just because of history, not just because of our you know, philosophical approach to things. Right. But because of the, the adherence to the commandments of Jesus Christ, the standard is this, everybody. The standard is if you look upon a woman with lust, you are guilty. Mm -hmm. That's the standard. And only orthodoxy approaches the standard and says, this is what you have to deal with. That's great. We want to get you to stop sleeping with a million women. That's great. But until you at least begin to get to that level where you are dealing with the inside of the cup, you're... And that's why this whole thing, you know, with a lot of evangelicals and even, you know, with some other people, they get like, oh, sure, it's a salvation. It's like, nah, man, because if you really understand what's going on, the, it is tough because it is about dealing with what, where are your appetites? That's why the Stoics don't cut it, because even though they may not have engaged in stuff, they're still ravenous wolves inside. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. As long as you could control your behaviors, that's all that mattered. We're not Stoics. It, it's you have to have the, the wedding garment must be clean. Are you following me? Okay. Yes. So laying all that out, that's the standard, right? So now let's just scale that up. So everyone's like, just so we're clear, I'm going on the record. I don't like alphabet soup stuff. I don't like, it's a travesty that my kids can't go to the library. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, all the, all the hypocrisy with the summer of love. I, I, I'm, I'm with everybody on all that, right? Okay, are we good? Yes. The woke stuff is terrible. Don't like it, don't want it. Okay? Great. But guess what, guys? Uh, narcissism, pride, greed, ap you know, avarice, lust, lust for power, all those things, right, are just as bad, if not worse. Because... If I had done, if we do pre-production, I'd bring you some fathers, plural, which talk about, you know, the drunkard has a better chance in heaven than the proud. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Hey, so hmm. I got you. One second. So St. Macarius says, St. Macarius the Great, sometimes actions that appear good are performed for the sake of the glory and praise of men. With God, these are on the same footing as injustice and theft or any other sin. Yes. And so, look, mm -hmm. walking humbly before thy God, right? Uh, <laughs> when the Lord said, when he quoted Isaiah in the synagogue, right? Um, come to, you know, someone, it would be great if you could pull up that, that verse for me too, right? But this aspect of actually doing good, right? Um, Job, he was, you know, eyes to the blind, right? He was, he was a cane to the, to the enfeebled. Like that incarnational reality is an, as an aspect of, of what we also have to become. And so here's part of the problem, right? The movement that we're, that we're trying to warn everybody about is, 
just like the guy who's like, hey, look, I'm not a drunk and I'm not sleeping with hookers anymore. Okay. Yeah, but you're you're still proud. In fact, you're it's you know, you're you're still you have no problem with you know XYZ, all these other all these other sins from the maybe even worse. Maybe even worse now. Yeah. Because because now we live in a time where it's like the guy that everyone's really into, right? Man, the the nars I mean, gosh, the narcissism, yeah. like all those things. It's like, yes, but at least you know he's gonna get rid of, and that's what we need. That's what it takes. This is this is getting back to Maroni, you know, like yep. yeah, she may be all those things, but like we're gonna get rid of like the the degenerates. But it's like, man, that's not the standard, guys. That's a big <laughs> and the thing that they say, Father, and the thing that they say now, and I've I heard it so many times, is that they're like. Oh yeah, he's a yeah, he's a narcissist. He's pompous, but we know that about him. But we know that about him. It's like what? What is what's that? How how is that the how is that the wave off? So the it's like if I'm just if I'm just prideful. At, well, it is. It's back to the DSM. We've taken that out of the DSM now. Yeah, we're no so fine. used to. We've taken it out of the DSM. That insanity has become normalized. Well, it's a virtue now. now. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a virtue. But we yeah. know that about him. But look at how he pumped that fist up. But look at how he pumped that fist. The I mean, other guy's too old to pump a fist. I, I hear that, though. I mean, that's a powerful. It's if you were to believe it, it's like I saw it and I was like, bam, 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 bam. Right. Like, exactly. Yeah, that is yeah. America. I was like, yeah. And I was like, well, everybody really... started chanting as soon as he did that. Everybody started chanting USA, USA, USA. Yeah. Is that I what mean, they do with the Iron Sheik would come out and then they'd be? <laughs> yes, it's wrestling. Yeah. It's that's from wrestling. That was from Hulk Hogan, man. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, what part of my face should I cut? Like, cut like right here, you know, something that we can cover up with hair later on, you Lady. know, like get right there. Like, don't don't do anything too like close to your face. You might leave a scar or something. We want like right there. So he just, you know, so anyway, I think we've made. Well, we've hit two hours. Well, we've hit two hours, but also, like, I don't think there's much room for nuance. There's always room for nuance, but we've made the. I think we've made the position clear. Yes. Not sir. everything is as it appears. This 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 is a giant game, and as long as you're playing the party lines, you're playing a losing game, and you've lost some focus of Christ, and it could be detrimental. You know. Um, if you fall into extremes on either side, or if you bend the knee to someone other than Christ. And the, mm-hmm. the thing that's the most haunting to me about this whole thing, this, I guess we can maybe wrap it up here unless father has something else he needs to add is, um, is the people that I've talked to who I see. And again, when you look at the insanity of addiction from the outside, it doesn't make any sense. Like I'm an alcoholic, but I've never been a gambler. Gambling makes no sense to me. I do not get why Same. You go to a boat Same. in Missouri and give people money for no reason, like with the chance of maybe getting a little bit of that back. Doesn't make any sense to me. Now, that being said, I've had my I've had my experience with a lottery ticket one time and immediately felt the power that came out of that little lottery ticket. I was like, okay, I can't do this. But again, when you look at people from the outside it's so obvious in this particular addiction in this particular spell or fever that they're enraptured in that they're bending the knee and the bending the knee is subtle it's very very subtle and you will always talk about god in the same breath as trump like not always but the people i'm talking about are still saying Mm -hmm. well he's god's tool he's god's tool and it's like but since but there can be a sin there can be a syndrome uh, a um a symptom of the particular spiritual malady that you the have. Syndrome works. Syndrome was the name of the mm-hmm. villain from Incredibles, but mm-hmm. there's a connection there. But I'm not there. Hold on one second. But like where you could become hyper fixated on the tool, you know, like you could become hyper fixated yes. on the hammer, on the power saw, yes. on the thing, and forget about the everything else. Like you could become yes. that. That is addiction. That's when. You know, you no longer use a, the drug or the drink to help you. you. Use the drug or the drink for the sake of using the drug or the drink, and then it's just yes. like that's when you have, you know, as we said earlier, 
you are going to bail or you're going to double down and you have doubled down. You've not gotten off the crystal meth train or the alcohol train or whatever. You're going to keep riding it for as long as you can ride it. Hmm. So the bending the knee, the sprinkling of the incense, whether you know it or not, like you don't have to know that this stuff is what it is for you to participate in it. It then in fact, it's better Mm -hmm. if you don't. So the real warning is not of like, Hey, like, you know, it don't continue to follow the plan, the plan that this guy has so that we can restore a place of quote unquote American normality that looks much more like falling into errors on the right than on the left. It's like, no, it's okay for us to take pride in ourselves. We're America. We won World War II, dang it. Like, we dropped the bomb. We stopped the Japanese. Like, we have a good place to be here. We have the right to be here. And over the course of decades, it's like they've just taken away all the meat out of the the town square, except for this one vendor. And this vendor is like, I have the meat here that you are looking for. It's just, you know, Mm -hmm. been offered to idols. A little bit so you know if you're not worried about that i think the thing is too is like another way to put it is you know whatever who knows we could be headed into like who knows four thousand years like no one knows i don't i don't claim to know but like you know there's this whole thing back at this we we talk about this you know there's hymnography of the church that's written where it talks about the saints of the last time, saints of the last time, St. John Maxwell, St. Paisius, St. Sophroni, like talking, you know, their own, St. Sophroni's own words talking about like, I don't know, you know, the things are just very interesting. And so the reason why I'm saying that is because guys, I mean, even if there is some kind of like, like St. Sophroni, he says, um, he said, unless there is some mass destruction through, um, basically nuclear or whatever he's like it's it seems inevitable that there would need to be some sort of resurgence of christianity because of the absolute um just like absence of life that's in society now Mm -hmm. he said this in like 90 like 1990 whatever okay so maybe that's maybe maybe that's what we're looking at and maybe all the you know all the people coming to orthodoxy is a thing, you know, um, although it's like, even though it's a lot for us, it's still nothing compared to the population. I think yeah. I just want to say that to everybody real quick. Like, let's not get like, that's great. Our parishes, which are used to being like, you know, if someone has like a 300 person parish, that's like huge. You know what I mean? But it's like, that's, that's our numbers are still nothing. If we, if we double like, in size, I think we almost get at half a percent. Exactly. Like, if we were to, like double like, in size. I just, just people just, like that's another side of the sobriety that isn't that I think people aren't seeing. It's like, we're so still insignificant on that level. If you're, if you're looking at this at the Rome level, we're so insignificant. It's just like, and I think that's part of the attraction for some of these people is that they look, they, they see clicking up to the cult one way or the other as like a means of giving, um, you know, kind of like validation. And I, I don't care. We're going to go over. Listen, I saw that. I saw that, you know, with one of the people that bailed on us on the other end, like this person was like legitimately ashamed. He's like, he, he was, you know, almost verbatim quoting him. He was like, I just, I asked him, I said, so do you want to go along with this whole narrative? Because like, you know what, are you worried that we're going to look backwards? He's like, yeah, I'm tired of, of the Orthodox church. I'm tired of our church looking backwards. Right. He literally said that to me. He was a clergyman and was like, yeah, you know, so he just went all in with the, the narrative, right. The, the, the 20 narrative uh, around uh, the virus, whatever. And I would say this is an inversion of that to some degree is that people you know, like, that's great. I'm Orthodox. That's great. Whatever. But like, at the end of the day, we got to win this because it's too crazy. You know what yeah. I mean? And like, I get that sentiment, but it's to me, that same temptation. Yeah. It's the temptation to be like, Christ is cool. Or how about this? Yeah, it's cool to pray, but I've still got to do X, Y, Z. It's but like, I still got my AK. You know what I mean? And so the thing is, is like, hey, man, you know, that temptation to want to link up. And that's where syncreticism, a kind of syncretic approach again, begins to become not just like I mix a little bit of Kabbalah, 
I mix a little bit of yoga. I mix a little bit of orthodoxy. It's like people keep thinking that way. But what if I was to tell you, look, we were just saying earlier, stop looking at politics as you understand it and ph- and philosophy as you understand it as some as disciplines outside of spirituality. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Stop doing that. Makes and just, no and that's the dichotomy. Just yeah. understand that Christ isn't like, hey, I want all of you kind of like that, what, that doesn't mean like on Sundays and like whatever. It's no, it's it's your whole mind, your whole body, your whole soul. And so if you keep thinking that I can have all these other things over here that God doesn't care about, and you think that doesn't inf- affect you spiritually, that is part of the problem. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. That that's that's mm-hmm. essentially what we're saying. And so, you know, if you feel like, but this is too crazy, how am I supposed to live? It's easy, man. It, that that's that's another problem is people think like, well, I gotta have an opinion. I gotta be able to be like, yeah, that's did you did you see that Ryan Long sketch where he played a um a social media commentator or whatever who didn't know which side to take on the Israel Hamas war? <laughs> and he's uh-huh. like he goes around, he's like, Man, people are waiting, people are waiting to find out. I don't know where to land on this. And he like goes yeah. up to some <laughs> Hasidic funny. Jews and he's like, So Israel, right? You guys are pro Israel. They're like, Yeah, it's easy for us. He's like, It's a little harder for us Gentiles, you know. But <laughs> he's absolutely just like killing it. He's it's I don't know. But the <clears throat> you gotta have an opinion because if you don't have an opinion, then you know, you're not playing the game. And that shatters the fantasy for some people and it I think it aggravates. Mm. Yeah. That letter to Diogenes, right? Like, mm-hmm. let us truly be otherworldly. Is that, I mean, that mm-hmm. that's all I'm saying, right? And and if you've walked away already, God bless you, but if you walked away tonight and us thinking it being about, like, some anti-Trump thing because we're, like, liberals or Biden's, like, you totally um, missed no. the point. I totally missed you know it. I'm saying you've totally... Man. Totally missed the point. I struggle with... I struck One of my big temptations is a, is a real... Um, like I'm probably much more conservative than I am liberal. Like I, I, I struggle pretty hard with getting angry at the woke stuff. It's, it's a temptation. My, I get caught up in the spell and there's a part of me. I know I just have to recognize that, you know, I imagine probably soon, I don't know what it'll look like or whatever. There'll be a, a purging of sorts on what level. Oh, oh that's, know. oh, that's coming. But that's what I'm that's saying. Coming ne- that's coming next year. And there's a little, that's coming next year. Me, there's a little part of me. And I don't want to nurture it. I want it to die. That's sad. I'm not going to participate in that. But I'm going to, I'm sad that I'm going to be like, I am sitting this one out, boys, because my king commands me to. My king commands like that it is healthy and beneficial for me to continue to follow him. That's the way that, and this is not him. So that purging, that kind of taking back the culture, that's something I've been yearning for for a little while. But at the same time, it's like, that's not a part of me I'm wanting to nurture. So I'm in no well, way. I, I, I will say this. I will say this, Andrew. The same thing about the poke that, that, that was said. I think it was first Dave Smith that said it, but I certainly said it to people after that. No one at the time said, I, I said, no one will regret not having taken it. Many will regret having taken it. Yeah. And the same thing can be said about participation in the coming purge. Yeah. No one will regret having not participated in the purge. But there will be many who regret having participated in the purge. No, 100 and that's I know that to be true. I know that to be true, but there's just this that what I'm saying is there's a tendency of me to still get angry and fall to the right. So we are in no mm-hmm. way sympathizing, we're in no way condoning or encouraging that no. camp as much as we're ripping on that camp. I just see one is clearly much more dangerous now. That's my whole thing is one side is clearly much, much more dangerous. And it ain't <laughs> one side. No, 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 I, I just, no. There, no. There, there are two ingredients no. in the same explosive. Yep, they're not because, because let's just be clear, right? The, the butchering and the conditioning of children to butcher themselves and, and like, having them to be able to butcher themselves without like it's abhorrent to parents. it's abhorrent it's abhorrent and like yeah. and so it's important to say but and i know it's i know it's like nuanced right but that's why our platform's long form because you can't talk about the stuff in like little 15 minute blurbs and really like be honest about it right mm-hmm. but like that's abhorrent and we like so the side of it is and again 
there's a whole thing here because it's like there's gonna be lots of people who are new here and they're gonna think whatever blah blah, blah. but it's like you don't a lot of you don't understand we've been we've talked about this stuff for like what yeah however many years now like so for instance right yeah that's abhorrent and it's wrong part of the problem is it is wrong for us to stand by and we don't stand by and not say anything about no. children no. being mutilated and all the alphabet soup stuff and all the bs surrounding like blm no that's wrong but that's number one kind of obvious number two we spend a lot of time talking about that and 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 it's it's not as dangerous actually because most of the people who at least would find us you know would kind of already get that mm -hmm. right that's, but that's what i'm saying Yes. I'm saying one side, and forgive me, Father, I just want to make my point yeah. clear because I think we're on the same side. Mm -hmm. One side is more sustainable. The other, the, I'm yeah. talking about the blue hairs yeah. versus the red hats. Mm -hmm. The blue hairs mm -hmm. is not sustainable. Right. They've already, like, they've burned mm -hmm. their fuel quickly right. and fast. Right. The side that's dangerous for me now, this is sustainable. Right. This is an engine that keep going keep, because this in some way falls into that demonic earthly wisdom that we've talked yeah. about before. Yeah. Because this does kind of make sense. It kind of makes sense. Yeah. A little. The other side, mm -hmm. wacky. Yeah. Have no Forget idea what's going yeah, on yeah. over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This side yeah. makes a little bit of sense. Like because even me, who am the host of a Orthodox <laughs> podcast, is kind of falling into this little trap of like, no, it'll be great. They'll finally get what they deserve. Kathleen mm -hmm. Kennedy, you know, the the CEO of Lucasfilm, Star Wars division, and. Disney will finally get run out of office and Dave Filoni will put in there and we'll get the Star Wars universe back on track and all this stuff. It's like, I mean, that's what I care about. Yeah. But it's like that because that like you can sell that. Yeah. This is you a can. hard sell. You can. You're right. You're right. More than five and years. I, and I would just say this to make it, you know, I'm always trying to just break it down for people to kind of get those moments. Right. Like. I don't just talk about Silouan or Sophroni or Elder Joseph. Right. I actually like pray, ask their prayers. You know what I mean? I actually, I, you know, Jesus isn't a mythical thing, you know? So I just want, you know, uh, I, yeah, I won't go there. So because of that, that's why, you know, this isn't some kind of weird moral high road. This isn't trying to be edgy and trying to find like the hot different take from everybody else. All this is, is being like, I actually believe my faith mm. and my faith says I have to do my best to actually love my enemies and to like pick up a cross, like all the stuff that's really hard. That's mm. what we're talking about. Right. The easy, the easy thing is all this other stuff. And, you know, the temptation to just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like orthodoxy is cool. And like loving your enemies, that's whatever, I guess. But this is the real world now. Sure. And like, mm. we'll deal with, we'll deal with that stuff on Sunday. Yeah, like mm. I, I'm saying, we can't be that. Yeah. And it, and if you are that, I don't know what to tell you, right? You're you you run the risk of real terror, holy yeah. terror, right? Did I do like I never knew you? Yeah, I never knew you, right? So this is what I'm saying is like this isn't this isn't some kind of like crazy thing. This is our this is what our religion teaches us. This is what our God teaches us to do. You know what I mean? Avoid the coming purge. Just try and avoid it. Go to church instead. Church instead of purge. So anyway. Their degeneracy is your trap. Yeah. Yeah. Once again. 100%. Um, okay. Yeah. That's a nice, fat, meaty episode for you guys. And I'm sorry for the couple of weeks we took off. But there you go. That's this is We're offering you this now. So, um, uh, so Scola coffee, uh, oh, so yes, let's talk about this real quick. Let's talk about this real quick. Father, do you want to do this plug? Because I think you have a probably a better understanding of what this is. Yeah. So listen, guys, there's this great project that's coming out, um, and it's being headed up, um, by our good friend. Everyone knows Father jo um, uh, John Hears. Um, he's working on this this project which is going to be awesome called christianities um and i don't know if we can play it but um it's basically a documentary that they're putting together to really explore well what is it what is let me play it 
What is it? I'm going to play. Let me play it. Uh, share sound optimized for video clip. Okay, let's play it. <clears throat> this is great. What is a Christian? Gaggy Margers. I kind of do this for a living. My name's John Hears, and this is our restaurant. And in this restaurant, we throw this Georgian Supra. It's a dinner, and it elicits all these toasts and ideas and emotions. And inevitably, the question comes up, what is a Christian? An evangelist, a missionary, a martyr, a healer, a saint. What is the church, a denomination, a building, an invisible body? What's Christianity? A religion, a way of life, a revolutionary political movement. There's a cultural moment happening right now where the old Christianity has died in many people's hearts. And yet, if you drive around town, you see that it exists. Why is it so different from one place to the next? You know, what you see is not a single Christianity, but Christianities. You see a divided faith, divided by politics, by belief, by whatever. Are you driving by a museum or a social club or something else? What's inside all those buildings? Is there something for you there? Where is God? And if you knew where he was, would you want to go? Is there a Christianity that's growing? Or dare I ask, more true than others? We're going to interview people from all over the world. And as we do, I want to go on a journey with you guys and figure it out. Our goal is to investigate how people through the millennia and right now, how they see Christianity. Let's figure out what's going on with all of these Christianities. So is this the... Um, the final cool. product of Father Peter hears is what is a Christian? Yeah. Wait. Okay. I, again, I can't hear you guys. Oh boy. That's okay. Continue yeah. on without me because I can't hear you guys. So, oh no, I can't. Go ahead. Hey. So, so this is this is um, this project, um, and you know, Father Peter uh, and John, they're they're really needing us to kind of get on board and to really help you know, raise the funds to, to make this project. And I think it's going to be great um, because we want to capitalize on this momentum. People are asking questions. This um, momentum. The, the public's, audience. what's that? This momentum. Let's capitalize on this momentum because we know where this one's going. This one's going to Christ. The other yeah. momentum that we mentioned earlier. Yeah. You know what well, well, I'm saying the momentum of people asking these questions. So I think a project like this and getting out there, it's going to capture in the same way, what is a woman did a, a lot to capture kind of people's uh, eye and start asking, you know, questions. I think this is going to be another great one. So we'll have the links um, put in there to, to donate. Please check out the project um, and go out and support, share it. And let's get some uh, support going to get this project funded. So absolutely. And you know what? It's that important. That's going to be our, uh, that, our plug for that. And then we're going to talk about um school of coffee which is affiliated through uh mount tabor which is a school uh injunction or that is parallel with saint mary's it's a school started through saint mary's uh the parish here in kansas city what else whenever you know what that's what we're going to plug those are the two things we're going to plug tonight those are the two important ones other than jack killing it with the thumbnails thank you so much fourth member of the podcast we appreciate it. And uh, thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye.